Welcome to Ucanic. In this video, we're going to show you how to replace the timing chain tensioner on a Mercedes. Uh, this is their 350 engine. This is um, found on uh, many models, almost all classes. Uh, there are 350, uh, starting from 2006 to about 2012. So this is the M272 engine. That's the engine code, but the procedure is the same for the V8s and the V12. So the the M273, so the 450s and the 550s models also have this same uh, timing chain tensioner and procedure. The only thing that's going to be a little bit different is maybe the space here. Uh, might have a, a little bit less space on the V8 and V12 models, but uh, the procedure is the same. Now one of the possible symptoms of a bad timing chain tensioner is that when you start the engine, especially on a uh, when the engine has been sitting overnight uh, you hear a rattle for a few seconds um, at startup and then it can go away uh, that can be caused by the timing chain tensioner because what happens is uh, this timing chain tensioner gets filled with oil so oil will go through these holes and then push this um, up but it does have a spring as well inside uh, but the oil just kind of drips overnight when you leave it parked it just comes out of this tensioner and then what that does is that it takes a few seconds for the pressure to build up and to keep enough tension on the chain so that's why you hear that and we're gonna have a lot more details on our step-by-step -step guide below so make sure to follow that especially for things like torque values or any additional information that we might add in the future uh, just for, uh, see our uh, guide so the first thing that you do need to do when uh, you replace the timing chain tensioner is to uh, set the crankshaft at 40 degrees. So if you look at the back there, if you use a flashlight, you see numbers on the back and that's the degrees. So uh, here there is a mark, straight vertical, right on the back there. You need to uh, rotate the crankshaft clockwise until you reach that. Um, that bring the 40 straight up. So you will put a 27 millimeter socket on the crankshaft bolt over here and then turn it clockwise. And it gets hard and then easy and hard and easy but um, as you turn this you'll notice that as the pistons go to the top dead center. But, um, but keep turning until 40 matches with the line on the back. So it's straight up. And then uh, the next thing that you need to do is and you should do this before you even start on anything else is disconnect the battery because we're working here by the alternator and um, you do need to disconnect the battery. The next thing is you'll need a 17 millimeter socket to uh, release the serpentine belt. You should start by drawing a quick schematic of the belt and how it's routed. Uh, otherwise you, when you go back to put everything together you're gonna forget how to route the belt. But if you do if you do forget, there's uh, pictures online that you can look it up. Um, but you put the 17 millimeter socket on a timing chain tensioner. And some models, but that's the older models, you'd put it right on the stud that came out, that was uh, sticking out here. But in this model, it's right, um, the position where you do adjust the tensioner is right below the pulley. So you see the pulley there and you might not see this because it's covered by the belt. Now the belt is off. But what you'll do is, um, once you place that in there, you're gonna rotate it counterclockwise. And what that does, brings up the pulley and then you just slide the belt out. And so that takes out the belt. Now the next thing is we have to um, take off the alternator. And the alternator in this case has um, four bolts, two on top and two on bottom. You can see the holes from uh, the top one there, the other one there, and you would uh, be right here. And the bottom one are easier uh, to take off from the bottom, but they can be taken out from the top as well. For these, you'll need um, a Torx E12 socket. So that's a E12, and you can see that. But if you are in an emergency, you can also use a 10 millimeter socket as well. So th this does work too. Okay, so once you take off the bolts on the back, you have uh, three um, wires. You have the ground wire that goes to the body of the alternator. Uh, you need to take off that bolt and disconnect it, which we have here. Uh, you have the positive. Now, again, you got to make sure that the battery is disconnected at this point. You have the positive that has the cap on the back. 
and then you have an electrical connector that goes to the voltage regulator. The voltage regulator is right back here behind the alternator. Uh, you'll press this and then pull. Now in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to see first if we can get the tensioner without um, taking the, this alternator completely out. So we're just going to move that to the side. Okay, that should give us enough room to access the timing chain tensioner. Now to remove that, you'll need a 17 millimeter socket. You place it on the tensioner and go kind of clockwise. Okay, so here we have the timing chain tensioner. And before you get that loose, make sure to put an oil pan straight underneath um, the engine because you're gonna have some oil coming out of that. It's not gonna be a whole lot, but there will be a little bit. Okay, so we take this off now. Now this does have a lot of threads. It'll take a while to get that off, but once you get, break it loose, as you can see, it comes fairly easy just as you turn that by hand. All right, so that came off. Okay, now we'll take the new timing chain tensioner and we insert it. Once you thread that by hand, then you need to torque this to spec. And for more help on that, just see your step-by-step um, -step guide will include the torque specs in there. So now that we have installed the time chain tensioner, we we'll put back the alternator and connected the wires. The next thing we need to do is uh, we need to release the timing chain tensioner. So the new one that we installed, if you saw that, this was pushed all the way in and we, we installed it that way, but you can see this is sticking out. So right now, what we need to do is release it so the new one installed in there comes out and pushes on the guide and put tension on the timing chain. Right now the timing chain is loose, right in front of it. So what we're gonna do here, we're gonna counter hold this while we turn the crankshaft. We're gonna turn crankshaft counterclockwise. We're gonna push it that way, opposite direction of that it normally turns, the engine turns. We're gonna push this right here, that way as well. Right down here, behind this last uh, ignition coil right there, there's a cap. You have to pop that cap off and what they allow you to do is um, to put a T60 right there, a wrench and hold. So you, you'd be holding that tight, putting pressure basically in that direction and you push pressure on this direction for the crankshaft. What that does, it puts tension, stretches the timing chain that's right in front of the tensioner and by stretching it, so if the timing chain is right here, if the tensioner is pushing up this way, timing chain is right here, it's loose right now. By stretching it, it puts pressure down on the timing chain. And it pushes that in just a little bit and then it releases. We're gonna push in that direction with a force of 70 Newton meters while we hold this right here. So once you do that, the next thing that you need to do is turn the um, crankshaft a couple uh, rotations, full rotations, just to make sure that uh, there's no issue, there's no interference before you start the engine. Um, of course, you gotta put back the serpentine belt as well, which we're gonna do, but first we're gonna turn that um, 
crankshaft a couple of times. We gotta remove this socket from back here. And then you gotta reinstall the cap back there. Um, it's recommended to replace that. Because it does have a shit seal in there, so it doesn't, you don't have any leaks. So we come back here and we put the 27 millimeter back on the crankshaft. And it should get hard and easy, hard and easy, but uh, that's the way it's supposed to work. As these pistons reach the top, that's center, so that's normal. And we recommend turning the crankshaft clockwise before you take everything off. Turn that a couple of times so you kind of get a feeling how much force is required and how it feels. It's a little bit easier now, we have the serpentine belt off. That's why we didn't put that back on, just because it just makes it a little bit easy. But you can see here, it's going the way it's supposed to. So we're gonna put back the serpentine belt and start the car. Just have to put the serpentine belt on. Get it come around the crankshaft, down to the compressor, up here to the power stand pump. Then we run across, all the way up here to the idler pulley. And we put that over the alternator, and then we stretch over here and just make sure that it's sitting on all these grooves, all the channels. First we come off here with the crankshaft. A lot of times it comes off down here at the AC compressor as well. Or, and then when you try to put, put it back on the tensioner, you just don't have enough room. But um, it should be good now. Let's go ahead and uh, we're gonna put the 17 millimeter, millimeter socket on the tensioner and then we're gonna be rotating our wrench counterclockwise so we're pushing down in this case. Okay, and then just slide the uh, serpentine belt over and then once you take that off, you wanna check it one more time. Make sure it's sitting on all the grooves. It's sitting properly on all the pulleys and everything. It looks good. Just uh, just to be sure, we're gonna crank this uh, pulley one more time. We're gonna turn the crankshaft pull right, one more time. So it looks good, and now we can go ahead and start the car. And if you got any more questions, make sure we're gonna address a lot of them or in our step-by-step -step guide. So uh, torque specs and things like that should be in there. Uh, so part numbers and a lot of uh, useful information. So make sure to go there. If you got any suggestions or any questions or anything, make sure to leave a comment. And thank you for watching. All we have to do now is put back the engine cover and close everything up. But that's it, thank you.